In this video, I would like to demonstrate how it's possible to perform quite complicated engineering calculations on a very basic computer. This is a Raspberry Pi 4. It's one of the cheapest desktop computers you can buy nowadays. But it is a full computer. It's got Ethernet, Wi-Fi, USB, HDMI. It's even got a monitor on the front. So we're going to do some basic calculations. And you know what? I think this is just actually a little bit too advanced. So let's just, just move this out of the way and get rid of these. And let's go a bit more old school. Actually, you know what? This is too advanced. Okay, now we're talking. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Thirty two minutes. Past the Apollo program and the moon landings were are some of the greatest engineering feats ever achieved by mankind. If I ask you to name the computer that made it all possible, you would probably think of the Apollo guidance computer, the electronic computer that helped guide the spacecraft to the moon. This was, at the time, a miracle of miniaturization, and indeed played a huge part. There is, however, another computer that played an even bigger role in the early years of spaceflight. A personal computer that did nearly all of the heavy lifting when it came to the day-to-day -day engineering on the Apollo program, and on everything that came before it. I am, of course, talking about the humble slide rule. So this is my slide rule. It comes in this protective plastic case, and it's actually made of plastic. There's nothing particularly special about this, other than it was given to me by my dad. He bought it in the 1970s. And in fact, if you look closely, it says W.H. Smith and Son, and I think they're still around. Presumably, this is what you would go and buy before you could buy a pocket calculator. So, a slide rule, and as you would expect, part of it slides. What you've got on this, if you look closely, are a set of scales, and they're logarithmic scales. So the interval there between 1 and 2 is larger than the interval between 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, and so on, all the way through to 10. So that's a logarithmic scale. And we've got two of them here. This is one for x, as you see, labelled here. And there's also one for x squared, which is very useful. We've also got these various other functions down here as well. So you've got your trig functions down here, division function here, and your logarithms up here. Now. Let's say we want to do a simple multiplication on this thing. Uh, so the obvious one, 6 times 7, ultimate answer. Slide this across here. So let's say I want 6 times 7. I line up my 1 here with the 6, like so. So you can see that 1 lines up with the 6. And then I can move this slider across to read it off on this scale, so 1 6 is 6, 2 6s is 12, and of course if you go to 7 6s, you'll get the ultimate answer, 42. And that's basically how a slide rule works. So it may just be a piece of plastic, but mathematically it's everything you need to go to space. Hop. Of course, a slide rule isn't just there to help you remember your times tables. It's an incredibly powerful tool that can be used to perform all manner of engineering calculations. In my recent video about space planes, I showed the derivation of the rocket equation, and I showed how this equation could be used to work out what proportion of a rocket's starting mass would be left over once all the fuel had been used up. If you were an engineer working in a time before Excel spreadsheets and pocket calculators, a slide rule is how you would have performed such a calculation. 
Okay, so this is our rocket equation here. Total delta V, that's change in velocity of the rocket, divided by the exhaust velocity is equal to the natural log of the starting mass of the rocket divided by the burnout mass of the rocket. I can rearrange that into this useful form here for what we want to find out, which is if we have a single stage to orbit rocket that needs to do eight and a half kilometers per second of delta V and has an exhaust velocity of 4.5, kilometers per second, what is the burnout mass fraction of that rocket, which is mb over m0 here. So we're going to work this out with a slide rule, and I've broken it down into three separate operations. So operation one. Operation one is 8.5 divided by 4.5. So we've got a division function here on our slide rule. So if I have 8.5 as my starting number, I can move the 1 on this slider here so that it's aligned with the 8.5. And now what I can do is I can move the slider down so that it's at 4.5. And if you look closely, what you'll see is that that corresponds to an answer of 1.5. Eight, nine. So I fill that in for the next stage. 1.89. There we go. Now we've got an e to the power x function here. And we're already lined up at x equals 1.89. And you can see that the answer here is 6.6, .6, which is our second part here. 6.6. .6. And that moves along to step three. So one divided by 6.6 .6 is, is our answer to this thing here. What's the burnout mass fraction? So what I can do now is what I'd normally do. I'm trying to divide one by something. So I would take my one here on the division column and I'd move it so it lines up with one. The trouble here is that I've run out of slide rule in this direction. So what I'll do instead is if I line this thing up so that the one here is lined up with 10, I can work it out using the scale and I'll just get an answer that's 10 times larger than the actual answer. So one divided by 6.6. .6, so I move the slider along the division part here until I get 6.6. .6. And you'll find that the answer here is I can be quite precise, 1.51 1 and a half. Now let's not forget that's 10 times what we're expecting it to be. So the correct answer is 0.1515 or 15.15% roundabout. And if you recall from my video, that is the correct answer. And we did that in the slide rule very, very quickly. Naturally, I don't foresee a return to slide rules, but there is a moral to this story. In this day and age, it's easy as an engineer to lean too heavily on advanced design tools. We have finite element analysis, computational fluid dynamics, generative design, optimization algorithms, and so on. The problem with computer models is that if you get the fundamentals wrong, it's just an expensive game of garbage in, garbage out. A good engineer always checks his or her work with basic hand calculations. After all, if it's good enough for the moon landings, well, what isn't it good for? I think that a fair few of you who are watching this video are young enough that you will get to visit space. When you do, the vehicle that you fly in won't look like this. It will look like this. Then make way for Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century! Oops! <laughs> Had the silly thing in reverse.